Hi, this video tutorial is about the Undo Brush in Sage Light Image Editor. And in Sage Light, there's really a few key places, I would call them, uh, where Sage Light gets its power from. One of those areas, for example, is in the quick edit mode. You can change these curves very rapidly. It doesn't show in the video, but it, this is happening in real time. And you can really just change around the image to make a dramatic difference very, very quickly. That's one area. Another area is the masking, where I can just select a color area or a brightness area. For example, I selected the yellows here, and what you can see is I'm just changing only the yellows, or what I can do is I can even change the color selection. Again, this happens in real time, it's just not showing on the video because of the frame capture rate. And you can see I can make quite a powerful difference, and then I can also draw a mask, um, as, as I've shown in another video where what I can do for example with the masking is I can just draw a mask and then I can change just that area of the mask and so that's pretty powerful too but the undo brush what it can do is it can link every single function including the functions where I've used the masking together where you can combine and merge different images or different aspects of the images that you've created as you move along with editing your image in fact, the undo image is really something I would call even more of a key element. You know, I put a lot of examples on the website, on the discussion board, and on the blog, and in the videos. And in almost every single example that I do, in fact, I would just go so far as to say that just about every picture I create, in some way, the undo brush is used. I think it's that fundamental. I think it's more fundamental than the masking. It's really not as powerful as the masking in one sense, but it's more fundamental because it's something you can just kind of have in your back pocket at all times. Just, once you get used to it, you can just say, okay, I don't like this part, I'm just gonna undo it. Or I like that part, I'm gonna put this part back. That sort of thing. As opposed to masking where, you know, you look at this picture, for example, and you say, hey, I wanna change this yellow, these yellows to red. And then you can do that, but it's, it's more of a forethought thing. Or the undo brush is, sometimes a forethought, sometimes an afterthought. It's, it, it just comes along more naturally in a lot of ways because you can say, hey, I didn't really, I liked part of what I did, I didn't like the other part, and then you can just say, well, I've got the undo brush to help me along with that. So what I'm saying with the undo brush is, is that once you get used to the undo brush, that you can make it an integral part of how you approach image editing to know that it's there as a tool, just like the highlight is a tool. Right, like I said before, the masking, for example, you know, you, you have to have more of an idea of what you want to do, and it certainly is a creative flow tool, and so is the undo brush, but you don't have to be so um, forward thinking about it to the point where you say, well, look what I just did right here. Let's say that I keep that, for example, and then what I can do is I can use the undo brush to just undo parts of it and keep other areas of it. Or, in fact, here, let me, let me jump ahead a little bit and give a real quick example. Let's say, for example, that I just wanted to turn this black and white, and then I want to get the train back. I can just use the undo brush to bring the train back. And as you can see, let's say I go out of the line a little bit, I, I have total control here where I can change the size of the brush and the hardness, and I can change the direction so I can put this back, and then if I go back and accidentally undo part of that, I can. I just have total control of how I want to merge the elements of the current image with the previous image. And so there's a quick example. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and get into more of the specifics of how the undo brush works. Okay, so let me start over from scratch. And so what I have here is I have the original image. And then what I can do is I can desaturate this image and make it grayscale. And now what I have is I have two images in the history buffer. I have the image I just created, which is the black and white image, and I have the undo image, which is the original image. Basically, the image that is showing is always the current image, and the image prior to that in the history buffer is the undo image. So for example, I know this seems a little bit dry, but this, uh, if you understand this part, the undo image, uh, using the undo brush is very easy. So for example, I just went and added some contrast. So now this is the current image, and the undo image is the image I had prior to that, which is the black and white one before I added the contrast. And But now that this is showing, this is the current image, and the undo image is the original image, and the image forward to it is just forward in the history, but it doesn't have any application here to the undo image. And so 
So basically, if it's whatever's showing is the current image and the one previous in the history is called the undo image. So let me step back here and remember right now the undo image is going to be the original image because it's in the history. You can always use edit view undo history and see what is going on with the history. And you can see that it came up with this high, highlighted number two, which was the current image showing that there's one image in the history of her forward of where I'm at and then one image backwards. And so it's not such a big deal once you get used to it. So let's go ahead and start here, remembering that the undo image is this image, the original image.